What's going on guys, before we get to this video, I just wanna let you know that this upcoming Thursday is a pretty big announcement for the 322 Threads brand that I started and myself, it's very exciting. We are actually doing, well, a whole new clothing line and our first ever giveaway. So I'm very excited, uh, so stay tuned for Thursday's video. I'll explain everything and exactly what we are actually giving away and how to get entered. <music> What's going on guys and welcome back. This is gonna be a quick video because I have gone over this before last year um, and that is a limiter strap. So pretty much last year with my XER, uh, we got it to work very, very well. I just was missing a little bit in the corners and I was still getting too much weight transfer out of it and I was getting some inside ski lift. So I shortened my limiter strap last year. That was like the final thing I did suspension wise and it worked really well. So fast forward to this year with my VR1 Boost, we are kind of in the same situation. We have suspension working, for the most part, exactly how I'd like it. I just want it just a little bit better. So in videos where me and Bruce talk about suspension, we talk a lot about uh, coupler blocks and limiter straps. Limiter straps, and we do try and do this as like a last resort, uh, kind of like where nothing else really did exactly what we wanted it to. Um, so again, suspension's all uh, relative. What I like is not what other, what other people like. So this is just, um, I like my sled to be very, very planted. So pretty much what I'm feeling right now is coming through corners. And yes, I have a lot of side bite with CNAs and big carbides. So that is to an extent uh, causing inside ski lift. Um, but what we really think is causing inside ski lift, and I know this because we changed it last year and it worked, is shortening your limiter strap. So pretty much your 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 rear skid is bolted into your suspension. That's a fixed location, and then your suspension, your your rear suspension, your rear skid works underneath that, kind of floats around. So pretty much what the limiter strap does, and I already took mine out, is it goes from this crossbar right here up to your torque arm. It actually bolts to the other side, but it goes to your torque arm. So this limiter strap limits how far the front of the suspension is going to come out. So it's how it's going to limit how much droop comes out of this thing. So what we're feeling is when it's coming out of a corner, it's letting this droop too far and it's going to pick that inside ski up. So if you shorten this, it's not gonna allow that front of the suspension to come down any further and it's gonna keep that other ski planted with keeping the same amount of, of side bite and everything. Yes, pulling this is gonna give you more ski pressure, but it's gonna limit that inside ski lift, you know, or inside ski from coming up because it's not, it's giving it no more droop. It's keeping it planted and it's gonna, it's gonna keep these, your sled fixed on the two skis and you know from here on the track back. You know, with a long limiter strap, you're gonna start, you're gonna start really rotating around this corner of this. So pretty much what we do is we pull it out. Last year, I only went a half a hole and now a half. So we're basing holes off and I have a, uh, a little tape measure here. Mm. We'll go off the two inch. Jeez Louise. So the holes looks like they're about an inch apart. So last year I only went a half an inch, which really only turns into a quarter of an inch of shortening it. So this year I'm gonna go a full hole. So what we do is this is how it sits in the sled. It sits upright like that. And the only thing you need is a uh, T40 and a 13 mil. Uh, to get this out. So what we are gonna do this year is we're gonna drill a new hole one inch up. So it's a full hole. So really it's gonna shorten about a half an inch. So when we wrap this around that bottom crossover um, bar at the bottom, you know, that attaches to the skid, it's gonna just shorten this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and mark this, drill it, and we're gonna reinstall it and obviously we kind of know what the outcome is going to be, but this is going further than what I've gone before. This is actually as far as Bruce went on the 9R project, um, which is just a little bit longer than what the cross-country guys are running right now. So I'm interested to see what it does to this. And again, I'm not changing anything else on the sled. I'm just changing this limiter strap. So we're going to see what it does. And very, very quickly, we just put went back together. So that is what it looks like. And what I did for you guys, because I forgot to take a measurement prior to shortening it, I actually put it back together at in the standard hole and it was six and a half from this bump stop 
up to the front torque arm and after adjusting it, it is six inches. So we did. I moved the whole one inch on the strap and we shortened this one inch. And I mean, I've looked at these things enough where I can tell that that is sucked up. The other thing that you have to do is you have to reset your preload on the front track shock. So you gotta, once you get it set, run it all the way out until there's no preload on it and then put, you know, whatever your preload is. We only run an eighth to a quarter. Uh, most of the time it's just an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this um, at some point, probably this weekend, or actually I don't know when this video is going live, but I'm gonna try it, I'll video a little bit, and then I will tell you guys how I feel about it. So just as we anticipated, this worked flawlessly. I do not think that we went too far and shortened it too much. I think it was just right. Just for uh, testing purposes, I might even go further with it just to see what it does. But honestly, it was unbelievably flat in the corners. I did not notice a ton of less ski lift. I could still wheelie it if I wanted to. Um, I could still you know, hang the skis. It still pulled skis until 80 or 90 miles an hour. Um, so I didn't, I didn't feel like I lost a ton of that kind of playfulness, but it was just so much, so much flatter in the corners and I, it just works better. It's so hard to explain, but it just works better. It stays flatter. And again, that's not changing anything else on the sled. That's just pulling that limiter strap. So we had a feeling that we were going to end up with this outcome because we have done this before, but this is a different sled than we've tried it on. This is the first time that we've tried it on that. Ryder approved. She is uh, looking for something to eat most likely. But guys, it is, it's worth it. It's pretty easy to do it. It's not very hard. Um, give it a try and see if you like it. See if you feel the difference that I feel. And uh, I feel like the guys that have the 80 pound front springs up front, that don't have the hundreds like I do, well, you pulling the strap is gonna help you guys even more than what it helped me because my front end is already up a little bit, so it doesn't make it nearly as bad. So try it, it's free. It's not, you don't have to purchase anything. You just pull that strap out, drill a hole, put it back together and go try it. So, but um, that's gonna do it guys. I mean, there's nothing else. I, uh, I always throw a video clip in there and I know you guys can't feel it or see it and I've mentioned this before, but I just like to break the video up so it's not just me talking the whole time. But uh, that is gonna do it, guys. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we have uh, 
Really cool stuff coming this Thursday, so make sure to check back for that. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.